there's a new kind of aquaculture gaining popularity in Japan that's less harmful to the environment than the conventional shrimp industry. The technologies of shrimp farming have now improved to the point that growers can regulate the conditions in which their super shrimps thrive. Shrimp can now be grown indoors with the help of cutting-edge technology like specialized lighting and filters. These revolutionary methods of shrimp growing have allowed Japanese farmers to raise healthier, bigger shrimp with less time and money than ever before. When it comes to seafood, Japan is by far the greatest consumer in the world. Although the Japanese market is not the only market that benefits from the country's love of seafood, markets all over the globe are also supplied by the growing Japanese aquaculture industry. One of the most influential factors in the sector's recent expansion has been the popularity of sushi and sashimi during the last several decades. As interest in Japanese food has grown across the world, so has the demand for Japanese seafood. The value of Japan's seafood market has increased to almost $5 billion. The country's fisheries and aquaculture industry are among the best in the world. This allows Japan to not only supply its own massive seafood needs, but also to export vast amounts of fish and shellfish goods. The fish for human consumption is mostly produced by aquaculture, often known as fish farming. It has a substantial impact on the global economy, estimated at $244 billion in 2018. But there are challenges associated with aquaculture. Overfishing is one of the major problems. The term overfishing refers to the practice of catching fish at a rate higher than their reproductive rate. Reduced catches for fishermen and a slowdown in fishing-related economic activity are only two of the potential negative outcomes of this trend. However, it is common for aquaculture enterprises to contribute to overfishing since they need to catch vast amounts of fish to provide food for human consumption. Both the wild fish populations and the ecosystem might be severely harmed by this. Overfishing is a serious issue in the aquaculture industry, yet there are several solutions to this problem, and this problem is found worldwide, including in Japan. Overfishing is becoming a serious issue in Japan. The rapid depletion of fish stocks is having a devastating effect on the country's economy and ecosystem. Japanese authorities have tried to solve the problem by enforcing tougher fishing regulations. Unfortunately, the number of fishermen far exceeds the number of available fish. The environmental issues are not just caused by overfishing, but many other reasons as well, such as many of the fish that are taken are too immature to reproduce, which contributes to the dwindling numbers of some fish populations. Because of this, the remaining fish are weaker and have a harder time competing for resources like food and habitat. Something must be done immediately, since the situation in Japan is dire, and the aquaculture industry is severely affected by this. And it only adds to the trouble when the sector accounts for roughly half of Japan's coastal fishing output. A little backstory. Saltwater fish farming started in Japan in 1927 in the calm waters of the Seto Inland Sea. Back then, they needed to stretch a net across the entrance of a tiny cove, then feed the yellowtail and sea bream that stayed within. Aquaculture of marine species started officially in the middle of the 20th century, when nets were first used to create artificial swimming pools for fish in the ocean. The advances in aquaculture also meant that fish could be farmed in enclosed environments. There was a time when yellowtail, sea bream, and flatfish were beyond reach for the typical household. But as the economy recovered after the war, more and more people were able to afford them. The rising demand was a major factor in the expansion of the aquaculture sector. Yellowtail and sea brim farms sprung up in coves and bays in the Seto Island Sea, a protected body of water generally free from the risk of typhoons. Other regions around the shores of Shikoku and Kyushu were also developed because they, too, had warm water which is a necessary prerequisite for quick fish development. According to an estimation, almost half of all fish caught in Japanese coastal waters are now farmed. 
The country's overall marine aquaculture yield was roughly 1,220,000 tons in the fiscal year 2000. Impressive, right? About 260,000 tons of this total was comprised of farmed saltwater fish. The rest consisted of shellfish, mostly oysters and scallops, and seaweed like wakame and nori. Nearly two-thirds of farmed saltwater fish was yellowtail, nearly 150,000 tons, followed by sea bream which was 80,000 tons, and then flatfish, blowfish, and yellowjack, around 30,000 tons. These numbers reveal that yellowtail and sea bream, the two favorites in Japan, are the most significant fish farm products. Fun fact, it takes around 18 months for yellowtail to attain a decent weight for harvest, which is about 4 kilograms after being put in holding tanks, and about 2 years for sea bream, which is 1.2 kilograms. But how did they do it? And what are some new technologies used by the Japanese aquaculture industry? Driven by the need to replace the labor of their country's aging population, Japanese businesses are leading the way when it comes to inventing new technology for aquaculture. Robotics and information and communication technology are playing a growing role in aquaculture in Japan. Robots are feeding sea creatures on farms, while sensors on boats are capturing and sending real-time data to support oyster and seaweed development. Nippon Sui San Kaisha, a fishing company in Japan, has installed a robotic feeder in pens for silver for the sea creature in the Sea of Japan, off the coast of Totori Prefecture. It distributes feed on a predetermined schedule, but it is not an ordinary timed feeder. It also has a feed demand sensor that detects fish strikes on fake feed products. Based on the detection findings, the automated feeder modifies the quantity of feed distributed, which increases productivity and reduces water pollution caused by surplus feed. The business was given a patent for its feeding technique and system for farmed fish last year. Meanwhile, Tokyo-based mobile phone provider Docomo has been working to solve the issue of Japan's aging population using technology. Oyster larvae die off when water temperatures become too high. Water temperature control is particularly crucial in farming, but on-site patrols to monitor the temperature were prohibitive. In former years, skilled farmers could predict water temperature from experience. As these old hands retire, their experience will be replaced by objective data analysis. Docomo has created and deployed an ICT buoy to measure water temperatures in the Tohoku region. These buoys collect hourly measurements of the seawater temperature at a depth of 1.5 meters. Docomo has also released an app for Android and iOS devices that display hourly updates of water temperature data as well as charts comparing the data from different years. In the future, the sensors may be able to assess things like wind direction and speed, wave height, and the status of water quality, including saturation levels of ammonia, nitrite, and nitrate. The National Institute of Information and Communications Technology, which is Japan's only organization specialized in ICT, has also been studying these boys. Since it's inconvenient to replace batteries on the sea constantly, their research group has been focusing entirely on increasing the lifespan of these ICT boys' batteries. The salinity and temperature of the water were both monitored throughout its test run in the Okinawa Mozuku seaweed farm. The sensors spend most of their time in a sleep state to save electricity. Some sensors need them to be on for just a few seconds every hour before acquiring a reading. The method relies on three boys placed at various depths and distances from the shore. Both the first and the final boys are equipped with sensors, while the intermediate boy acts as a messenger, collecting data in a series of low-power hops before sending it to a land-based tower. The information is kept in the cloud and may be accessed through the internet. All this new tech for farms is a good omen for Japan to stay ahead of demand. This will surely help them to produce more shrimp while using less water and land. This is a great way to farm shrimp and we hope that more farms will adopt this technology, which will be best for both the environment and the economy.